Horizon Zero Dawn is probably one of my most anticipated games on the PlayStation 4. Ever since we heard about it last year at E3, I have been so hyped about this game and cannot wait to find out more about it. Now, Horizon Zero Dawn is developed by Guerrilla Games, who are most famous for uh, titles like Killzone. For them, this is a massive departure from what they have previously done. They have focused mostly on first-person shooters. Now, this is the first time that they're actually stepping into tackling a third-person action adventure. RPG and I have to say based on the gameplay and what we've heard about it it looks like they are doing a brilliant job so this is everything that we know so far about Horizon Zero Dawn number one the setting so the setting of Horizon Zero Dawn looks absolutely fascinating it is set in a post-apocalyptic world roughly about 1,000 years in the future now in this humanity is no longer the dominant species and instead the earth has now been conquered and ruled by machine-like creatures that look very similar to the dinosaurs. Now, we did get some new information at E3 this year about something called co the Corrupted. So there are machines out there that are corrupting other machines to become destructive and dangerous. And obviously, you know, I'm sure we will be exploring that a lot. But the world looks absolutely incredible. We've only seen certain areas, but we have been told by Guerrilla Games that there will be a variety variety of locations from beautiful sort of snow-capped mountains to dense jungles to desert areas. Now Guerrilla Games have also explained that within this open world um, there is actually a robotic ecosystem throughout it. So you know depending on what areas you go to there will be different kinds of robotic animals or beasts that you can find in those areas and uh, not all of the map will be available from the beginning. It will slow open up as you progress through the story and then I would assume that you can revisit certain areas to get resources and that kind of thing in a very sort of Tomb Raider style way so this world is going to be massive in scale fully explorable as well completely open world with no loading screens and I for one cannot wait to delve into it I'm incredibly excited to play this game and I'm so interested in the world the lore how the earth has 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 become um, this sort of machine run place and what has happened to the human race and what has caused this this to happen you know are we going to find out about the events in the past that have led to this so there is a lot of mystery surrounding this game and surrounding the story and the world and I can't wait to delve in and uncover more about that mystery number two the main character so the main character of Horizon Zero Dawn is an incredibly badass and kick-ass redhead by the name of Aloy now her past is is one that is shrouded in mystery. Uh, she was actually raised and adopted into a tribe and very little is known about um, her origins, where she came from. But within this tribe, she is singled out. She's special in a way and that has made her an outcast. People sort of almost revere and fear her from the looks of it. Now, Aloy seems to be an incredibly curious and inquisitive uh, person and she does start to ask a lot of questions about her past and also about the world and and what's happened to it now these questions are of course forbidden in her tribe so very quickly Aloy is forced to set off alone on her own mission and goal uh, to discover her past and also just dis to discover what has happened to the world and why the human race is no longer the dominant species now she is also incredibly special in terms of the technology uh, that she has and that brings me to the third point the technology the abilities that Aloy has. Now she has two pieces of technology that really singles her out. The first piece is a special kind of earpiece that she has. It's like a triangle and um, I think Guerrilla Games have called it Focus and what this basically does is it gives her a unique ability and an advantage really as a hunter uh, to scan the creatures and the beasts in the world. Now what she can basically do, she can, she can scan these monsters and she can actually uh, 
get very useful intel and information on them. So for example, she can find out what level they are, any weaknesses that they may have, any bits that can be blown off, as well as any components that you might gain from killing them. And finally, she can even see predicted routes so that you can actually plan what routes they will take if you want to try to take down these creatures in a stealthy like manner or perhaps try to avoid them. The second piece of equipment that she has is a special spear that she equips and she can basically use this to take down uh, monsters as well as uh, actually overriding them. So in the gameplay demo that we saw at E3 we did actually see her take over a, a beast called a broadhead which she basically used then as a mount to actually get uh, into a village a lot quicker before it was destroyed. Now obviously the world is going to be absolutely massive in scope so Guerrilla Games have said that there are going to be a, a number of different uh, beasts that you can tame to use as your own personal kind of mounts uh, to navigate through the world. So I don't know it sounds very sort of Far Cry primal um, but I'm very excited to see all the different creatures uh, that you can actually um, influence and dominate and, uh, and ride. I can't wait to see that. The fourth new addition that we got to see a lot more of at the Sony conference was the RPG elements to the game. Now obviously we mustn't forget that this is also an RPG. It's also the first RPG that Guerrilla Games have really kind of done um, and I have to say from the looks of it they're, they're getting it right. There are definite RPG elements that we could see in the trailer so we could definitely see uh, dialogue trees. Now obviously that's going to show that there are, there is going to be definite story progression and character progression and and you know whether or not your decisions in these dialogue trees are going to affect the story that I guess that remains to be seen but it at least allows you to get more information about the world and the different factions and also the, the storyline and I'm looking forward to uh, exploring all those different dialogue options there. Uh, there will of course be lots of side missions for you to complete and we have been told these will be in two different categories you'll have personal missions and national missions so personal missions will be for individual people to help them um, in their everyday life or whatever problems they might have and then you'll have national missions which you can do uh, where you'll actually help a tribe um, and that could actually affect the world and the makeup of the world because there are different tribes that uh, like and dislike each other and there are, there are tribal rivalries so you might be able to affect that balance of power there um, which obviously will affect the world that you're working in. We also got to see a large part on crafting, the different crafting abilities that you have. If we actually pause on the menu, you can actually see quite a lot. So there are four different things that you can craft. There are different mines, landmines and potions that you can get. Uh, you can craft ammo and also upgrades as well. We did actually see in the gameplay trailer them crafting an explosive trap which is used in a very effective way against the corruptor that she fought later on in the trailer. All these different things that you can craft of course cost resources and you will obviously pick up different materials and resources and shards from the world especially from monsters that you might hunt and take down and you can use these to craft uh, different different things. Now the whole crafting of uh, mines and potions definitely reminded me a lot of The Witcher 3 and I would assume you know because different uh, monsters will have different weaknesses the kinds of potions and mines that you craft will obviously be incredibly strategic in, in terms of what their weaknesses and, uh, might be. The fifth thing that we got to look at as well uh, was combat. Now the combat in this game looks brilliant. Often in an RPG it's, it's quite difficult to get excellent combat combined with excellent RPG elements. The Witcher 3 did it very, very well. And I have to say that uh, Horizon Zero Dawn looks like it's got it perfectly down as well for both the combat and the RPG elements. Now Guerrilla Games are well known for producing some epic set pieces and action pieces and combat in their previous games and it looks like Horizon Zero Dawn is going to be exactly the same. The combat looks brilliant, the, the movement of Aloy is fun and fast, you know the ability to duck and dive and roll out of the way. The different weapons that she can use as well look incredibly good. We got to see a weapon wheel uh, which you can pick up in the middle of combat 
and it sort of slows time down a, a bit to give you time to adjust and we got to see some different weapons as well so we saw the shadow sling which is like a slingshot and there are different kinds of bombs that you can um, craft for that so you have uh, fire bombs freeze freeze bombs and also shock bombs which we got to see used uh, you of course have different kinds of arrows now we did actually get to see her take on one of the corruptors and uh, Aloy actually scanned it and saw that its weakness was, was fire then obviously crafted a bunch of fire arrows and uh, took down the, the corruptor very handily using using said fire arrows and also concussive arrows as well to blow certain parts off of it the rope caster of course was back to showcase that in terms of her uh, tying down the uh, the corruptor to stop it from jumping and attacking so the actual weapons look fun um, we also got to see as well how you could use the broadhead the actual mount in the middle of combat as well and that was incredibly fluid uh, the way that that worked and of course the slow-mo focus is back as well um, from shooting from from you know from uh, riding on a mount as well as uh, you know the finishing killing blow but I have to say that uh, Horizon Zero Dawn looks absolutely incredible the RPG elements have got me incredibly excited now as has the combat and the crafting and the world I just can't wait to jump in and check it out but we have been told of a release date so we now know when this game is coming out the release date for uh, Horizon Zero Dawn in the USA is going to be on the 28th of February next year 2017 if you live in Europe um, it's going to be I think on the 1st of March and if you live in the UK which is where I'm from uh, sadly we're going to have to wait until the 3rd of March for this game to be released um, but it will be well worth the wait guys and this game looks absolutely incredible so there you have it guys there is everything that we know pretty much so far about Horizon Zero Dawn I'm sure there'll be more information that will be coming out the rest of the year any new information of course I will let you guys know and share that with you guys but uh, right now I'm just ready to get my hands on the game I really am I'm hoping they'll bring out a demo so we can actually try it but if not this is definitely a game that I'm going to be buying on day one this is a game I for sure will be pre-ordering because I cannot wait it looks absolutely amazing anyway there you have it Horizon Zero Dawn will you be buying it what do you think of the game and are you as excited about it as I am let me know in the comment section below I'll be back later in the week with more more E3 videos, so look forward to that. Alright guys and girls, take care and as always, happy gaming! Yeah.